Our special recording, The Lone Ranger. <laughs> horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! The mission of Santa Maria stood at the edge of a desert. Clustered around the main building were the house of Padre Philippe, the cabins of a few servants and Indians, and a lofty tower, the bells in which could be heard even farther than the tower could be seen. It was the hour of vespers when the Lone Ranger and Tonto turned their horses into the mission courtyard. Seeing no one around, they reined up near the bell tower. There's the padre. This is a mission. Why are you here in a mask? This letter will introduce me. Please read it. Oh, very well. From another padre, whom I need not name. You know him well. So I do. He calls you a good friend. That is enough for me. He told me that you asked his advice and help in the matter of a missing book. Oh, now I understand your presence. What was the nature of the book? It was the journal of the founder of this mission, a handwritten manuscript bound in horsehide. I discovered it only recently among the many old documents in the mission archives. Indeed, I had not found time to read it before it disappeared. Could it have been mislaid? No, no, my son. Much as I regret to say so, it must have been stolen by a man I trust. I see. He is Stephen Dunn, a land agent with an office in the town of Casa Grande. I often let him do research work in the mission archives. He alone had an opportunity to remove the journal. All right, we'll see that man, Padre. Thank you, my sons. But use no violence, I beg you. We won't if it can be avoided. Adios. Adios. Until then. As the masked man and Indian set out for Casa Grande, which was some 15 miles from the mission, Stephen Dunn opened his office door to two burly men in rough clothes. Howdy, Scrap. Howdy, Gus. Come in, grab some chairs. We heard you want to see us, boss. I sure do, boys. You want us to help you fleece another tenderfoot? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. I've hit on something a lot bigger than selling worthless land. Yeah, spring it. Yeah, you see this thing? We'd be blind if we didn't. There's no notebook. It's the journal of the Padre who built Santa Maria Mission. He wrote it better than 200 years ago. Yeah, what of it? Right here, he tells of coming to these parts with a bunch of Spanish soldiers. They've been to a mine somewhere and had a heap of gold. You aim to sell a worked-out mine on the strength of that? Now, let me go on. The Spaniards lost most of their horses, so they couldn't pack all the gold or get all the men back across the desert to Mexico. Yeah. The old padre and some others stayed behind and started the mission. But what happened to the gold? They couldn't use it to buy anything. So the padre made it into the five bells at the mission... There was no iron around, and the gold worked up easy. <laughs> you can't stuff us, boss. Gold won't ring. Oh, won't it? A gold piece rings. Well, that's hard gold. It's mixed with some. So was the gold used in the bells. Five gold bells? With a couple fortunes. Yeah, they're mighty heavy. We can get them down with rope and tackle and haul them off in a wagon. If we're careful, we won't even wake up the padre and his engines. We'll melt them down. That old smell that you've been trying to sell. That was my plan. When do we go after the bells? Tonight. I've got a wagon waiting at the corral. It's loaded with all the gear, provisions, and water we'll need. Now, wait a minute. There's one thing I want to know before we start. 
What did Gus and me get out of this? Why, the usual 10%. It isn't enough for a big job. We want equal shares for equal dangers. Well, that's how it is. Gus, he's drawn. No, you don't. Don't, 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 don't stab me again. I... I don't need to. You're finished. Let's get out of here. There's no need to hurry. Nobody comes to this office at night. I got the book. Leave it, leave it. Dunn stole it. When the sheriff finds it, he'll figure anybody low enough to rob a padre needed killing. Yeah, but it tells about the bills. Tear those pages out and we'll burn them later. Hey, I savvy. Hey, that's it. Now we'll go after those bells. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Toto had arrived in Casa Grande. Standing in an alley which ran beside the land agent's office, they studied the place. The masked man was saying, There are no windows on this thing. It looked like light come out of a street window. Somebody came out on two brothers. Maybe land agent, one of them. No, they're too roughly dressed and hard looking. It's good time to go in now. All right, come on. Here's his door. Anybody here? Look, they're on his desk. Ah, old book. It's a journal of the old padre. Kimasabe. Yes. Look behind desk. Man on floor. It must be done. Uh, him dead. Stabbed. He hasn't been dead more than a few minutes. Maybe we saw killed him. Come on. They're not in sight. Uh, what we do? We we'll take a quick look along the street and notify the sheriff. Sheriff Mark Mason was an old and daring lawman, but he had the faults of being impulsive and jealous of his authority. Maintaining that he could keep order in the county without assistance, he had long since fired his deputy and dispensed with the use of posses. Sitting in the jail office with a month-old newspaper in front of his face, he heard the door open. Without lowering the paper, he growled... Well, what is it? I want to report to you... Masked man of the Legion, eh? Sheriff, we're on your side of the law. Then what's that mask for? Let's talk about that after I report a murder. Murder? Who's been murdered? The masked man quickly told what he and Tonto had seen and found, explaining about the old manuscript. The sheriff's eyebrows contracted as he listened. Then he exploded. What is Mr. Padre Philippe have sending for a mask, fella? To look into a stealing case. I neither ask nor take credit for any help I give the law. But that's beside the point. While we're talking, the killers are escaping. I'll get them in my own good time. I know from your descriptions just who they are. You do? Sure. There are a couple of poor cats called Gus and Scrap who hold up on a run-down ranch on Squaw Creek. They've been helping Dunn on some shitty deals, so I reckon they killed them over dividing the money. Well, in that case, we'll be going. That freeze we are. Uh -huh. And pull gun when we turn back. Well, I'll take your guns. As the sheriff reached for the Lone Ranger's guns, Toto used his hips to give a violent shove against the table no, beside no. which the lawman stood. Jolted, the sheriff swung his gun toward the Indian. At the same instant, the Lone Ranger whirled and grabbed his gun hand. No, let loose my arm. Eh? This tap's got out of his hand, Toto. Sorry about this, sheriff, but you gave us no choice. Get this arm down. Take him the sheriff's gun, eh? That's worse than murder. We'll leave it in front of Dunn's office. Yeah, you will pay for this. It was several hours later when the masked man and Indian swung from their saddles in front of the Padre's house. The aged priest met them at the door, a lamp in hand, and lighted their way inside. Come in, my sons. Uh, thank you, Padre. You're not gone long. Only long enough to get your manuscript. Do you mean... Uh, here it is. Yes, that's the journal of the founder of the mission. But how did you recover it? That wasn't difficult. We found it on Dunn's desk. He was dead. Murdered by two men on a scrap and gust. Mm, see, I have heard of that evil pair. Apparently, they did not share Dunn's belief that the book was worth taking. So it would seem. A thousand thanks for recovering the journal, my sons. Oh, will you not rest here tonight? We appreciate your hospitality, Padre. But a bright moon and cool breeze makes us a good night to ride. We have a long journey ahead of us. Adios, As the Lone Ranger and Toto rode away from the mission, the killers halted the land agent's wagon in a cottage grove oh, oh. nearby. 
Just point it with this whip. There's the bell tower. Yeah, and there's a light. It's in the Padre's house. It would keep your fellow up so late. I don't know, but we can't wait for him to go to sleep. Well, let's get down and do it. Padre Philippe was deeply engrossed in reading the recovered manuscript. He had discovered that three pages were gone, freshly torn from the others. But he gave that mystery little thought, so great was his interest in what remained. As he traced the faded writing with a finger, there was a knock on the door. The padre looked up, puzzled. Who is there? I'll be with you in just a moment. Grab him, Scram. I've got him. Let loose of me. Shut up, or I'll let you have it with his knife. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto had left Santa Maria Mission after recovering an old manuscript which had been stolen from Padre Philippe's archives. Shortly after their departure, two killers known as Scrap and Gus seized the Padre at his door. The Padre was protesting. You men know what you are doing better than you do. Now stop talking and start walking. Marching the priest into the cottonwood grove at the point of a knife, the killers gagged him and lashed him to a tree. Then they drove their wagon to the bell tower. Swiftly and silently, they unloaded their gear and lugged it up an inside ladder that led through a trap door to the belfry. There, Gus draped blankets over the four openings. That done, he struck a match. So let's look at the bells. They're fastened to this beam with bolts and big rivets. All right, let's get busy with the tools. The Spaniards built things to last forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had interrupted their ride in order to rest their horses. As they stood in the trail, the Indian asked, Now, what time, Kimasabi? Oh, I'll see. Hmm. Oh, what's wrong? You lose watch? No, I found something in another pocket when I reached for a match. The piece of paper that wasn't there before the night is like parchment. Oh, me got candle to match in the hair. Yeah. Now you've got light to see. That is parchment. It's freshly torn. Must have fallen out of that old manuscript that I had in that pocket. It's got words on it. There are four complete words left. One is Santa, another is Maria. That's a missionary's course. Another is Campania, meaning bell. The last one is oro, which means gold. Oh. And what do you make of it? The valuable pages in the manuscript were torn out, and this scrap is part of one. Now, me savvy, why we find stolen book in plain sight beside dead man. Yes, that fact should have impressed us at the time. Must be them fellas after something at mission. Yes, and the Padre may be in danger. Get him out of City Silver, easy. Got easy, fellas. We're going back to the mission. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Somebody on the trail ahead of us. You pull up. Oh, Mr. Sheriff, what we do? Cut to the right. Come on, sir. Ten bullets. Confetti flow. He's following us. We soon have run him. That will take time. We'll separate. When he can't follow, we'll be able to reach the mission quickly. He's heavy. Adios. Adios. Come on, sir. Looking back a few moments later, the Lone Ranger saw that the sheriff had chosen to pursue Toto. He turned his big white horse toward the mission again. All seemed peaceful at the mission when the last man was mounted near the entrance and cautiously made his way to the Padre's house. Faint noises drifted down from the belfry. Guided by the moonlight which poured through the open portal, he found the ladder, loosened his guns, and began a stealthy ascent. Finally through the last river. We can push that bell loose now. Oh, wait. I thought I heard something below. Get your ear down on the trap door. Sure. Somebody's coming up the ladder. Get back and let him come through. Shoot and I'll wake up the Indians. I'll get him with my knife. 
The Lone Ranger lifted the trap door just far enough to see it was pitch black in the belfry. The masked man threw the door wide open. At the same time, he used his free hand to remove his white hat, which he knew would be visible even in the deep gloom of the belfry. Holding it by the brim, he slowly lifted it through the opening. There he is. Down he goes. Just struck. So savage was the downward stab of his blade that when it sliced into nothing but an empty half, he almost fell headlong through the hole. As he struggled to save himself, the old ranger leaped from the ladder to the floor. Unable to determine the odds against him, the masked man backed toward a wall, drawing and training his guns in the direction of the trap door. Who are you? Why are you here? At the sound of his voice, Scrap leaped upon his back, getting one arm around his neck. I've got him. Gus, help me. Hold on to him, Scrap. I'm coming. As he struggled to his feet, the Lone Ranger's fingers came into contact with one of the blankets which covered the openings in the tower wall. He grabbed it and jerked it loose, letting in a flood of moonlight. The light revealed that the killers were crouched and ready to charge. Scrap, Gus, you better give up. He knows it. He's got a mask on. Mask and that were two against one. He'll heave him through that hole. The crooks closed in. The masked man swung a powerful right at Gus. Take it. Hello caught the killer on the side of the head, knocking him backward into the bell. His shoulders hit the bell, which clanged as he fell. Hardly had the din of the bells died out when there was another, even more ominous sound. The beam on which the five heavy bells had hung for two centuries was giving way, weakened by age, the work of the crooks, and the fight that was in progress. Gus scrambled to his feet with a yell. The beam breaker! Hurling Scrap aside, the masked man leaped for the opening from which he had torn the blanket. At the same instant, the beam broke. A ton of bells crashed against the bell free floor. It too gave way under the impact. Just as beam bells and flooring went down, the Lone Ranger got one leg over the bottom of the opening in the stone wall. Scrap gave a despairing yell. As from below came the jarring thud of wreckage hitting the ground. There was a moment of silence. Then excited yells told that the Padre's Indian converts were gathering in. From his perch in the embrasure, the Lone Ranger looked down the shaft. He saw that the ladder, which was fastened tightly to the wall, had not been damaged and could easily be reached. He swung himself onto it and began a careful descent. In the meantime, one of the converts, wakened by the struggle in the bell tower, had discovered and released Padre Philippe. The old priest had arrived at the tower just as the bells fell. As he stood there, as much bewildered as the Indians, Toto rode up. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh. Where my friend? Here I am, Toto. He must have me. My son, what happened here? The, the beam broke while I was fighting two crooks who wanted to steal the bell. I managed to save myself, but they're dead in the wreckage. Oh, I thank God that you survived. But why did those men want to steal the mission bells? I just looked at one by matchlight. They're not badly damaged. But a break in one shows that they have a high gold content in their metal. Gold? Yes, enough to make your mission very rich. And that's what crooks find out from old book. That has caused all this trouble. The three crooks who knew the bells were made of gold are dead. Here are the pages from the old manuscript which told about the bells. Where did you find the pages? I just took them from Scrap's body. Now only three of us know the secret. It's safe. And you and Tonto will never tell? You have our word for that, Padre. Thank you, my sons. The bells of Santa Maria will ring again. Oh, it's the sheriff. Sure, I'll finally run you down. Uh, get your hands, you. Wait, put that gun away, Sheriff. Padre, these fellas are fugitives. I want them for witnesses. You won't need witnesses now, Sheriff. Scrap and Gus are dead inside the tower. Yes. They were killed when they fell from its top of the bells. So that was the noise I heard, eh? Huh? How did it happen? While you were chasing us, they tried to steal the mission bells. You did? Did I? I reckon I've made a fool of myself. They also laid violent hands on me. You know, I'm... I'm right sorry about that, poor dear. And if I had done this mass man and engine any wrong, I... I apologize for that, too. There's no need of that, Sheriff. Adios, Padre. Go with God, my son. Get him up, Scout. Now, who in tarnation might that masked man be? I have it from another Padre. He is the Lone Ranger. I'll still copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, 
Fred Foy.